And we have the 13th today, don't we, Sister Jovin? Yeah. Till midnight. 13th of the 4th, 2014. We also can thank the Lord for Sister Michelle's uh, recovery and healing of her hand. We prayed for her and she recovered. And Brother Moses, he's a working class man now. Oh, oh, oh he's a working class man. <laughs> and we thank the Lord for him laying hold of that John. He'll be able to rejoice there. We give you the glory, Jesus, the great provider. In his time and his way, he does things his way. We can't change that. So we thank the Lord there. And we also thank the Lord for Brother Samuel over in the Philippines. Hey? Eh? That the Lord using him there as a light in the religious darkness amongst the Roman Catholics and all the other religious concoctions in that country. And everybody agreed and said, Amen. Yes. So, uh, I, I happened to get on to a video last night by sheer accident about a minister called by the name of Carter Conlon. It was an exposure. This young man was exposing him. And what this young man was saying, he used to be a disciple of Carter Conlon. I suppose he'd be in his 30s. And he knew Carter Conlon and David Wilkinson and the whole church, because he used to be in the church. And um, this young man was saying that the Lord gave him a word for Carter Conlon. And it basically said that his boat's been broken, that God broke the boat. Jesus was saying to this young man, because he wasn't faithful, he's broken the Times Square Church boat and it will come down. Well, many people have said over the years that I was jealous of Carter Conlon and David Wilkins and Times Square Church but I prophesied in around 2009 I think it was thereabouts the Lord showed me a vision of the ceiling of Times Square Church in New York just caving in and this young man got his word from the Lord in 2010 and 11 and uh, he went to see Carter Conlon, but he, he couldn't get a hold of him until the next year, apparently. And Carter Conlon came with his two bodyguards. I mean, to have a man of God to have two bodyguards, even one bodyguard, tells you something about the faith, the faith standard, doesn't it? And how much they believed God and the Word, in God we trust. If you really want to hear what I said about Times Square Church, you just go to our YouTube channel and anyone listening and key in David Wilkerson and you get around about the... I think it's about from the 21st minute forward go in about 21 minutes but I, I recommend the whole video the whole message about David Wilkerson and Times Square Church so that was interesting for me to come across that and I wasn't even looking for it so I did email the young man and gave him a little bit more of a uh, information and revelation, the teaching at Times Square Church. 
bodyguards never heard of in the New Testament scriptures right the men in the New Testament scriptures believed the scriptures the apostles prophets past the teaching evangelists of the New Testament believed resist not an evil man so that's what Jesus did as a, as, a, as a lamb before the slaughter he went he just put it in the Lord Lord's hands amen let's turn in our Bibles to Ezekiel 11 today just to start off with Ezekiel 11 and we'll see what the spirit will say there Ezekiel chapter 11 and I'm going to read only one verse verse 19 which says in my Bible Ezekiel 11 19 then I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them Take the stony heart out of their flesh. Give them a heart of flesh. You see that? And we've been ministering about that at times over the last few months. New heart. You got that? New heart. Let me say that the new heart does not do old things. And the old heart does not do new things. Because you can't. Yeah? Now let's go to Hebrews 10. As a prelude today. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. And we'll read in Hebrews 10, verse 20. It says in my Bible... Or let's go to 19, Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. A, not many priests, A over the church and the house of God a new and living way a new heart new wine skins born again new wine new doctrine new way how many people are really born again you can't have a new heart and operate as a person with an old heart. It just can't be. When we're born again, we have a new heart. We have a new and living way, not some dead way. The way of the world is dead. Because it's the ways of men and women. Degenerated. The ways of men and women lead it to destruction. The ways of men and women seem right in their own mind, but lead to destruction. It seems right at the time. The cute little child, oh, I won't hit the child, it's not good. But it, that's what seems right to humanity, because if you hit humanity, it goes, ouch. And then you see the little pluming dust, puff of dust go up and in there is written, not love. But when you read the scriptures, the scriptures of the Lord say, beat, beat the child. Discipline the child. And the child's soul will be saved from the fires of hell. A lot of difference in there. Even our 
working class man would say that, man. <laughs> oh, oh, he's a working class man. Come on. New heart. New way. Not same old, same old. I'm trying my best. Now, you don't have to try anything. Born again, new heart. Just let the spirit that you've been born of lead. Can someone say amen today? Let's turn in our Bibles to our message today in Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go there. Ephesians 1, we're going to read the first 14 verses. Ephesians 1. Hey? The Lord will provide. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. He lays me down in the green paddocks, not bindi eyes. Someone say amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus the Christ, by the will of Father. To the saints, not sinner saints, to the saints who are in Ephesus and who are faithful in the Christ Jesus. Hello. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption in, as sons by the Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, Brother, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which we, by which he made us acceptable in the beloved, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in the heavens and on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in the Christ should be to the praise of his glory. <clears throat> in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Oh, wow. There's a lot in there. Probably study that for about five or six years and just keep gleaning and gleaning and gleaning and leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. We all have our electronic devices turned off, don't we? Yes. Hey. So, our message today is a beautiful message. Very, I find it a very beautiful, simple realisation. Last week, we looked at the T, the letter T in supernatural, and we're in the natural uh, section of the word supernatural. 
We're still doing the Supernatural Seed series after months. And we've been deconstructing that word and looking at what we have in the seed. And we've opened the case of the seed and we find the case is that we have just untold benefits and blessings, joy. We just have such greatness through the supernatural seed, but only on faith obedience. Supernatural seed is of no use to anyone unless they utilise it by faith obedience. Last week we looked at the T, N-A-T, super, S-U-P-E-R, N-A-T-U-R-A-L, supernatural. And we looked at the T and we said it was for triumph. And that the Lord causes us to try. And we looked at some of the clauses of the causes, didn't we? And we came to the conclusion that it really is a celebration of um, the supernatural seed that the Lord has enabled us to lay hold of the triumph, his triumph. He has caused us to triumph. As Moses said, he, ha he, he has triumphed gloriously. Putting the horse and the rider and the chariots into the sea. And Moses and the people of the Lord, the Israelites, escaping the snare of the fowler. Amen? Stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea. you got nothing else, have you? save the Christ and so last week we looked at the triumphing of us through the seed by faith obedience and we're not going to triumph if we don't if we don't apply the word if we don't walk in the word of the Lord we're not going to triumph we're not going to have the victory Jesus did not die on the cross and was buried in the grave and rose from the dead for himself. He done it for you. He done it for you. He done it for me. He, he needed to do that for us so that we could triumph by faith. That's why he gave us faith. He gave us his son. God gave his son. His name is Jesus. God gave us power we access the power by faith can you say amen so today we're going to look at in the word supernatural last week we looked at the R it's a N A T U R A L but we used it under the heading of a T of triumph. We said redeemed last week. This would be uh, N-A-T-U-R-A-L. And we used the R for redemption. And we looked at how we go free daily on every situation, on every attack. When the devil comes to unhinge us, we always remember the Lord redeemed us. We've been redeemed by the blood. If Jesus never shed his blood, we could never have, we can never triumph. We could never have triumph. We could never be redeemed, set free. So, we used the word triumph last week. He caused us to triumph. And this week, we're going to look at the A. And our key verse is, Verse 6, Ephesians 1, verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which, read it, read it with me, and then you'll be able to get the revelation. 
Ephesians 1 6 to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved I tell you what there's a lot of people in the world today every turn you take and they don't feel acceptance they don't feel loved they don't feel complete they have all the issues you could think of but but the saints the saints Ephesians 1 verse 1 Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God not by his own will Paul never called himself a lot of people out there have called themselves. And they get themselves a Bible and they go to Bible college and they want to be, as it said, standing up the front, mouthing off. And when you add it all up, it's just dribble. It's useless. It can't help you. It's just all about the earth and the things of the earth. It's all about self-esteem. The very subject Jesus never spoke about. He didn't have to. Jesus didn't have to talk about self-esteem because the scripture says in Ephesians 1, 6 and it, it said to the praise of the glory of his power and grace that he has made us acceptable. He has made you acceptant. And you need to have that witness of that, don't we? We can't have it. So we just run wild like the unaccepted. You know, like children. They don't feel accepted at home. What do they do? They run wild. They go out looking for acceptance. Some of the young men become drug addicts. The young girls become prostitutes. Or they they go out and break and enter. Ram raid. Smash things up. They graffiti expensive buildings and trains. They don't feel accepted. They destroy public property. They're not getting any attention at home, are they? But Jesus has made us accepted and not just accepted by sinful humans, by selfish sinful humans or selfish sinful relatives or selfish sinful traditions of men, cultures. But the word of God says in Ephesians 1, 6, accepted in the beloved. Who is Jesus? Look, when you're accepted by Jesus, it's just, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. When Jesus comes, Jesus comes, when Jesus comes into my heart, oh, happy day. It's not like, oh, nobody loves me, nobody accepts me, nobody understands me. That's all just deleted Paul an apostle of Jesus the Christ by the will of Father writing to the saints oh happy day who are in Ephesus who are faithful 
Oh, happy day. Oh, come on. Happy, not just anyone. Not unfaithful saints. Faithful. Faithful. Faithful is a beautiful place to be. You know, if you're faithful to your wife or your husband or your friends, you don't have to worry. Anyone's going to find anything out? Do you? It's like I don't know you. Plus, press uh, last is. It's like I don't know you. <laughs> If we're faithful to the Lord, we don't have that baggage called unaccepted. We just don't have it. We don't carry that load. Better down the road without that load. Hey? Better down the road without that load. So, let's have a look at verse 3. Well, it gets, gets, just gets better and better as we go along. Oh, happy day. Oh. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of the Christ. We're looking at the man Jesus there. Some get a bit confused and they say, oh, look, he said he's the God of, of Jesus. So Jesus is not God. No, the man. The man Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was God and deity, wasn't he? Uh, God and man. God manifested in the flesh. In Gethsemane, who was that crying out? The Jesus that was in the beginning? And that was the one born of the womb of Mary. Can we do it another way? Jesus, who was seated at Father's right hand forever and ever, he just wouldn't say no. Can you say amen? As long as we get that straight. Blessed be the God and Father of the man, our Lord Jesus the Christ, who has blessed us, here we go, what with? A few dollars. He blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in the Christ. Oh, happy day. Hey? Oh, happy day. And only the faithful, only the faithful see this. Only the faithful can see how blessed they are. You know, how blessed Paul was, but he's looking for bread and water. Now they're like opposites, aren't they? How can I be blessed? You don't see Paul saying that. You don't see Paul the Apostle whinging about I'm, I'm looking for something to eat. I'm hungry. Where are you, Jesus? You haven't paid my bills. Where are you? I don't believe you anymore. Look, God doesn't have a relationship with any man or woman at that man or woman's whim. It's in Christ. Always in Christ. He has given it to us. He has blessed us far above any natural blessing. Hey? We are accepted. Look, take a look outside your door sometime. And have a look what people are trying to do. In the world. They're all trying to be accepted. Why do people wear those clothes? 
They want to be exempted. They buy the Broncos jerseys. They buy the, 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 the eels or whatever. They want to be accepted in that group. They hang out with certain people. They want to be accepted in that group. They go to certain... Oh, I go to this church. They want to be accepted. And they've forgotten. If they ever knew. Hang on, hang on. If you've been born again and you're a saint, which is a disciple of Jesus, and you're faithful to him, you're accepted in the beloved. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh, happy day. My beloved is mine. And I'm my beloved. And the banner over me is his love. I don't need a banner over me. His love. You can't see that. You can't see that like you see an object. But that's the banner. The fragrance. We, we diffuse the fragrance of the Christ everywhere we go. It's a royal fragrance. It, 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 it's not a... It's not a... A Kate or a... William fragrance, you know, Princess Kate. She likes the, she likes a bit of Jack Daniels, as they said, you know. Kate likes a bit of Jack Daniels. And William spotted her on the catwalk and lusted after her. I seen her on the catwalk. Now I'm not talking about that sort of royalty. I'm talking about heavenly royalty. Not fleshy, rotic, filia, but agape royalty. Hey? We're accepted in the beloved. My beloved is mine, and I'm my beloved. We're betrothed to the royalty of royalty, the Christ. I don't feel accepted. Hey, you need to get born again. You need to get born again. And then you, you the strange thing is when you're born again, and you become a saint, and you start to... Discipline yourself under the mighty hand of God forward slash the doctrine of the Christ and you're faithful. The strange thing is, you think everyone loves me. Everyone loves me, man. He's got those glad eyes happening. Everywhere you go. Look, I go out and people say hello to me. I don't even know. Oh, how are you today? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling this. <laughs> right, I, you in the family, eh? <laughs> Distant relative? In the Christ? Let's be close. I guess <laughs> a hug. It's not just the glad eyes happening. You, you get to the place where your where the eagle's cry starts coming out. Because you're finally accepted. Finally. I'm accepted. Hey? Finally. I just didn't I just didn't have that feel before, that accepted feel, you know. And even though you are accepted, you know, it's not that fullness. There's still an emptiness there. Because we have that because we're not accepted in the beloved. And therefore, 
we're off on tangents here and there, and, and, and we kind of evolve through life, you know. Starting off just drinking beer, you know. Didn't know why or what I was doing here. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And then goes on to drugs and LSD. Oh, we leave the disco and we go into something else, you know, the smash, smash, brother, smash, bang, boom or whatever. Or techno music and... But still not accepted, so you just keep shoveling those drugs down or, you know, just keep going to the gym or just keep, you know, trying to accept oneself for what you are. <laughs> but you know what? The first person I accepted when I came to Christ was me. <laughs> I got in touch with me well and truly. And now I'm not willing to accept myself outside of him. Glory. That sounds a little bit Irish, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not willing to accept myself out of him. Would you please explain? I'm, I'm really jealous for myself now. And I'm jealous for my neighbour. And I'm jealous for the Christ. This is why I have to proclaim and preach and teach, sing precise messages. The crossing of the T, dotting of the I. As I said initially in our singing this morning, and prior to that, that Jesus crossed the T. You know, he, 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 he done everything to a T. To the Golgotha standard. <laughs> we, we live under a gold gothic standard. Can you say amen? Hey? We are accepted in the beloved. Not just into a club. Or an organisation or religion. We're accepted. On equal par with each other on the same level that there will be equality in the Christ can you say amen and he's blessed us with all and every spiritual blessing you can think of but once again it's in Christ not outside of Christ Inside his perimeter, inside the four square gospel, inside the glory bound paraclete paddock. Can someone say amen? It's always in, in, in. How many times do you read in those 14 verses we read this morning? In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in him, in him, in him. Not outside of him. Not on a wide road, but on the narrow road. Hey? Oh, happy day! Ah! Then even as you get down the road, you start breaking into maybe not just glad eyes on a daily basis, not just eagles cries on a daily basis, but even Holy Ghost hackers in shopping centres. Damalu senderate! Bayalu! And the religious people shrink back. Ugh. They don't understand that you've got a fire burning in your bones and you're not going to bottle it or hold it back for any human. You're going to let it loose. You're going to turn it loose. you got to do it Christ's way. Or not at all. When I came to Jesus, I said, Jesus, just turn me loose. Woo! 
in a world of darkness. And he turned me loose in his name. Whoo! Accepted in the beloved. Hey? Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to Psalm 46. Let's go there. Psalm 46. I gotta do it Christ's way. Or not at all. Psalm 46 and the verses. One. God is our refuge in strength. A very present help in trouble. Can someone say amen? A very present help in trouble. We have found acceptance. True acceptance. We have found belonging. We, we have that witness of belonging by the Spirit of God. We finally belong. Hey? You look at all these rebel bikers and drug runners and drug addicts and you have a look around at the prostitutes, male and female, and you have a look around at the missing persons bureau worldwide. None of them have acceptance in their heart. None of them know acceptance. None of them feel belong. They feel like they don't belong anywhere. They feel like a misfit. And that's what the good shepherd is all about. Feeling accepted in the beloved. Saying, hey, my past and upbringing parents and relatives may have been like that and I have no choice. You can't choose your parents. You can't choose your relatives. As a child and a baby, you can't choose your tradition or your culture, but you can choose when you're of age to follow Jesus or the devil. You can make your choice and then you can get yourself a new heart and a new spirit rising up in you, hallelujah, where you feel so accepted, you feel like everyone loves you. But we know by the scriptures they died. And you just walking down the street with those glad eyes. You just go down the street there. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And the money in the bank is just not there. They just did not win the lotto. <laughs> the, bill, the bills are piling up, but you just saying, Ah! Shimabarasendarase! Huyubarakaya momombala sonda! You know, I'm walking around going, oh, I'm a Christian. You sound like a Christian. You don't sound like accepted in the beloved. You don't sound like a saint. You don't sound like you're faithful. And you don't sound like you're a disciple of Jesus the Christ. You just sound like a Christian, dim Christian. Oh, you know. Mum told me, just don't panic. Don't panic. That was her wisdom from her wisdom bowl. Don't panic. A very present help in the time. In other words, you can have people, you're in trouble. Psalm 46, 1. You're in trouble. It's a hypothetical. I think I'm in trouble. Right, you think you're in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'll call a friend. And the friend comes. Jesus is already there before they get there. Because Psalm 46, 1 says, He's ever present. He's forever present. Though I go to the ends of the earth. 
to the inner regions of depths of hell. King David said, you will be there before I get there. <laughs> hey? No wonder we can lean on him. We can trust in him. Accept him in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that he should be we that we we should be holy and what without blame before him the world I'll be blaming you for everything I oh, did this and you did that and you this and yeah, and, and it's all unrighteous judgment. But before Him, that's why we need to be holy and blameless before Him. Don't worry about people. You try to live your life being right before people, you're not going to go nowhere. Except downhill. You'll never reach your full potential in the paraclete. You'll never really lay hold of that glory bound, glad eyed, eagle crying, Holy Ghost harkering, power, joy, peace, revelation of being accepted in the beloved. Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 94. Hey. Oh, happy day. Ah. Ah. Oh, happy day. Oh. Ah. Psalm 94, 17. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. Your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Oh, happy day when Jesus comes. Let's look at that again, verse 17. Unless the Lord, unless the Lord had been my help unless I had a revelation that I was accepted in the beloved my soul would have just fell to the bottom of the sea <laughs> settled in silence and that's to say oh, there's no one can help me now yeah I'm finished it's all the devil's just saying to you, oh, it's over now. Oh, yeah, you're finished now. They're just going to wipe you out. You know, it, oh, it's, it's done. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh, look, the devil says that to me every day for the last 27 years ministering. <laughs> but I had an understanding and a revelation and a realization. I'm accepted in the beloved. Woo! I'm a sealed deal. Woo! I'm a saint because of what Jesus done at the tree. Oh! I'm faithful to him. Oh! 
that puts me in line for every spiritual blessing in the heavenly. And I'm blessed when the war begins in the air. I'm a blessed one. I have every blessing I need in the war in the air. Woo! Because I'm accepting in the beloved. Look, you can be accepted in every religious hovel in town. You can be accepted in every man-made Bible college, every auditorium. You can be accepted in every athletics team and every football team and every boxing club and, 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 and you can win the heavyweight title and, and you can have everything and not be accepted in the beloved. I know what I want. I know what I have. And I know what I'm going to keep. The rest goes out the door. It goes in the bin. I need to lay hold of, I need to treasure, relish in and cherish that I'm accepted by Jesus the Christ, the beloved. That is everything. Because when you cherish Jesus, when, when you put Jesus as number one, when, when you're faithful to him, all the rest has to bow down. <laughs> the demons have to bow down. The ungodly humans, they have to bow down. And they might not necessarily come before you and, and, and do a curtsy or bow down, but I know they're bowing down. Because that nothing come out of their big mouth. Because their mouth is stitched up with the truth. <laughs> Woo! Oh, happy days. When Jesus comes. And this is all because of the supernatural seed. And if Father had not left us the seed... We would all be wandering around the earth feeling unaccepted. I know. Without a doubt. There are people out there every millions upon millions and they're in a nice home. And their parents really do love them with that affilio love, you know? And some are mistreating them with erotic love. We hear about that, don't we? In the Roman Catholic Church. Pedophile. Molested. But even though you might come from a really nice house, and all the bills are paid, there's always food on the table, and the humans in the house say, I love you. I love you, you know, like a sort of a parrot. I love you. I love you. Yeah, sometimes you just feel like, you know, I'm not accepted. I just don't feel accepted. Because you're not accepted by God until you're born again. And you're in Him. That's why it's such, such a slight to God deserving greater punishment than the unbeliever will get that when someone comes to Christ and they're in Christ as John 15 2 says any branch in me grafted into me does not bear fruit 
I cut it off. I, I throw that dead, fruitless branch that does not want to submit to my word out. And it's such a slight that the Lord predestined you and called you and, 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 and saved you and wash you in the blood and give you his spirit and new heart. And you tasted of his peace and power and grace and <clears throat> he chose you. And, and uh, you tasted of the good things of the spirit and then you go away. Had it all. And then you just say, as it says in Hebrews 3, 12 to 15, beware brethren, least. Brethren, 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 accepted in the beloved. Brethren, Paul speaking, holy brethren, accepted in the beloved. Least that evil heart rise up in you through sin. And you, you make your own decision to depart from the living God. Hebrews 3, 12 to 15. You depart. Why? Because you, you, you're choosing sin rather than holiness. And sin always leads you away from God. Always. And then that person's running around the place. Oh, I need help. Oh, yeah, and they go around trying to find churches to change the word of God to, to, to pander them. And their sinful lifestyle. Oh, come on. As we read in Ephesians 1, 1 to 40, it's all in him, in him, in him, in him, in him. I might write a song in him. Oh, happy day. When Jesus comes into my heart, oh, happy day. Floods of joy, oh, my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since the very day Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy. How much joy? Floods. Explain that. Can you elaborate on that? Well, glad eyes. I'm sort of in that, you know, Psalm 29 9 thing. Glory! Ah! Glory! Glory! What about a bit of um, eagle's cry? Ah! Ah! Or forward slash, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the power of God and salvation under them who dare believe. But it's foolishness to them who don't believe and are perishing and, and just dying off and just being prepared as stubble and hay for hell. The gospel is foolishness to sinners. So we're going to, oh, you don't want to upset the sinners. You don't want to upset the people. I better not preach the gospel because they might think I'm a fool. Look at that. You're preaching the gospel and you, they don't think you're a fool. It ain't the gospel. I'll tell you now. <laughs> The world don't think you're a fool? It's not the gospel of Jesus anyway. It might be the gospel of Brian Houston or Joyce Meyer or something. Brian Houston's still there again today, surrounded himself with his lights and his sparks. Curse the day. Writings of Ephesians. Uh, writings of Isaiah. Well unto them who surround themselves uh, 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 with, with their own fire and their sparks and their lights. Still again, more lights, more sparks. Hey? Blabbing on about land and possessions. Look, when you hear ministers forever blabbing about the Old Testament and how God's going to give them all the land as far as they can see, you know they're carnal. You know they're not in the spirit. And you know they're not accepted in the Christ because they're not faithful. I'll tell you that right now. 
And don't ever think, oh, I'm sealed. Nothing can happen now. That's hogwash. The ladies in church were sealed. The Hebrews of Hebrews chapter 3 were sealed because Paul said they were holy. He can give us the flick anytime he wants on rebellion. He won't flick you off any other way. He said, if you lose your flavour and taste for me, if you, you just like salt that's got no taste. And what's that good for? Nothing. Because that's all salt is good for. Salt is only good to be salt. It's not good for anything else. That's why the Lord turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. At least he can make some use out of her. At least he can put her on the hamburger. Can you say amen? Salt some people's steak or something. She'd be useful for something. Lot's wife had a lot, but she didn't know what she had. She's too blinded by the world, by Sodom and Gomorrah, the beautiful cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, too blinded by the bling, too blinded by the illusion of money and goods and possessions, blinded by the light of Lucifer himself, the dark, Angel, the dark light. Same dark light that was over the head of William Brenham. He just William Brenham just kept preaching and teaching. Contrary to the word of Jesus, mocking him. Because the word of God says clearly, we're not led by angels. We're led by the Holy Ghost. I don't read where any scripture says, or any Bible says in John 16, you'll be led by angels. Now he, the Holy Ghost, will lead you. Can you say amen? Our message today. Accepted in the beloved. Eh? Ephesians 1, verse 5, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus the Christ to himself according to his, look, good pleasure of his will. That's his will. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for the Lord to accept us. He wants to accept you, brother. He wants to accept you. He wants to accept you. He wants to accept me in him. You can't get... Look, as I've said, you can be accepted in a club, but that's just a club. The club will close down sooner or later. The club will close down. The Buffalo Club will not last forever. Hey? But not Jesus. He ain't going to close down. He is eternal. There is no end. Of every kingdom and club on the earth, Jesus sent. When the prophecy of Daniel, of the brass and bronze statue and gold, whatever it was, had all the elements, and all the different elements meant different kingdoms and clubs. He said, none of them will remain. Not one club, not one denomination, not one kingdom except the beloveds. Forever. Jesus, his kingdom will last forever. Forever and forever. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Psalm 124. Let's go there, please. Hey? Oh, happy day. Ooh. Oh, she cut us. Oh, 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 o
is in the name of the Lord who made a building. No. Our help is in the beloved. Who? Where? Where is it? In there. What, in that building? No, in him. In Jesus. That's where the help is. You want help? I get him on the street for 27 years. I need help. I, said, I know exactly where to go. Whosoever calls upon the name of the beloved shall be saved out of your present trouble and situation. And then, if you're a good boy and a good girl, well, you'll be able to go on continuing to be saved from all your drama if you continue. And then if you go all the way to the end, you'll be saved the other month. Forever in heaven. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day. We are accepted in the beloved. The true saints True disciples who are faithful, who live that holy life and blameless life, because that's the whole objective. And he's come back for a bride that's holy and blameless. He'd come back for a bride without spot, blemish, or even a wrinkle. It's all been ironed out with the biblical iron, hasn't it? It's all been ironed out. Iron sharpens iron. As one man countenance the other. Can someone say amen? Luke, Luke 8, 21. They are the beloved's brother. They are the beloved's sister. They are the beloved's mother. Who hear the words of the beloved and do them. Can you say amen? Look, all this blessing is through the supernatural scene. Now, we, 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 we've superseded anything on earth today, haven't we? <laughs> we've superseded lotto. We've superseded uh, uh, acceptance, you know. Uh, uh, touched the snotty hanky of, of Kate or something. Or, or, or William, we've superseded uh, sinful royalty. We've superseded uh, uh, Bible colleges and demonised denominations. We've superseded the lot with the supersede. That's the main objective in a human's life, that they may aim and that they may lay hold of being accepted in the beloved. My beloved, then you'll be saying, my beloved is mine. And I belong to no one else but my beloved. Banner over me is love. Hey, I'm walking under it every day. Everywhere I go, there's love all over me. <laughs> Just the love thing, you know. <laughs> it's all over me. I'm not looking for it. That's the beauty. The prophet of God is very sensitive to the moving of the love of God and the spirit of God. Therefore they're not out there looking and oh, oh will, will you follow me? Oh, oh, we, oh look, we, we give out food vouchers at our church. Please follow me. That's not a prophet. Please watch my video. Please, oh, please buy my book. That's not a prophet. That's a P R O F I T. Who are prophetless. True prophets are non prophet. Hello? Someone can say amen. You can say, you're allowed to. <laughs> Don't let the devil restrict you. 
<laughs> Fails of the air. True prophets are non prophet. Non prophet people. Hey? Accepted in the beloved. What more do you want? It's full to the brim. Paul said it. Colossians, didn't he? Hey? Let's have a look at Colossians. We'll just round it off. Just wipe that gravy off the plate here today. Hey? Ha ha ha! Woo! Tom Ring! Colossians chapter 2, 10. And you! Ah! Ah! You're complete in Him, the Beloved, who is the Head. Poncho, the head commanding officer of all principalities, princes in the darkness, in the air, and the principalities. He's the head of them all. What did he say? He said, you, who, who, everyone, no. Colossians 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus the Christ, by the will of Father and Timothy, our brother. Listen, to who? Saints. Oh, faithful brethren. Not just saints, are they? They're not just born again, are they? They're faithful Faithful. You've got to be faithful. What's he going to say on the judgment day? What's he going to say? Come here, saint. I've got a crown for you. No, that's not the scriptures. The scriptures say, you, come forward. My true saint. My true and faithful Servant, I have a crown of life for you. <laughs> oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! When Jesus comes. When Jesus came, he took my, he deleted, he erased my sin. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day. And he made me accept it. In the beloved. Let's read it and finish. Ephesians 1 6. To the praise and the glory of his power, by which, by his power, his power, he has made us acceptable. To himself. And everybody said. Amen. And amen. And amen.